Hello everybody, welcome back to Edge Sports Network. We got another interview for you guys today. As always, part of our summer series, we got Cameron Shelton, Northern Arizona University. Cam, thanks so much for joining us here on the site today. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Great to have you on. Looking forward to this interview right here. Um, we, we're starting to move into guys on the West Coast now who play you know, West Coast schools, so kind of expanding the range of our interviews here, which is always good. But we always start off the interview kind of early on in your career. I mean, I'll start off with a real basic question. What kind of got you interested in basketball when you were younger? I mean, what are some of your first memories you have of playing basketball growing up? Um, well, the first memory I have would probably be um, shooting. Uh, my dad bought this uh, kind of little tax court for me to um, just have in my room, and he used to set up a free throw line. It was just a belt, but uh-huh. um, I would shoot behind one of his belts, and um you know, I guess that's that's really my first memory of the sport. But he always tells me that the reason I, I started loving basketball so much is because um, I used to love Allen Iverson. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm, I'm sure that was true. Yeah, AI, not a bad guy to look after. Um, I know, you know, he was in his prime right as you were kind of growing up and stuff, probably getting introduced to basketball. I mean, from a young age, was being a basketball player kind of always your dream? I know some kids, you know, you ask kids, some kids want to be an astronaut, a firefighter. I mean, was being an athlete kind of always the main goal or was it something you kind of developed a little later on in your career? Um, well, originally I wanted to be a, a football player. Believe mm-hmm. it or not. Uh, my grandfather played um, football. I'm at Paul Queen in Texas and then my dad played football at Long Beach State uh, when they had a team. So, uh, you know, I was pretty much groomed to be a football player and that was always my goal. But mm-hmm. um, surprisingly, I, I never actually played a single season except for one uh, flag season in third grade. So oh, wow. um, I was looked up to, to guys like Reggie Bush and, mm-hmm. um, you know, the, that USC football team. Because my, my cousins played at USC too, so I, I really always wanted to be a football player. But um, I just never played. And uh, eventually basketball just kind of took control of my mind. And, um, you know, I, just, I kept on with that. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, basketball has definitely worked out for you. Football might have worked out for you. We don't know. But basketball has definitely – uh, worked. I mean, you had a really interesting high school career, played a couple seasons at Chino Hills and then a couple seasons at Damien High School. I mean, you were part of that team back in 2015, 2016 at Chino Hills with the Ball Brothers. I mean, you guys went 35-0. and 0. I remember back then, you guys were really just, you had all the hype in the country, really, not just in California, but everyone was talking about you in the country nationwide. You guys won the state championship. I mean, how was that experience for you? What's it like winning a championship, especially when literally all eyes in the country are on you guys? And, I mean, you guys were a high school back then. It's not like you guys are this big college program. You're a high school. You've really captivated everyone's eyes in the nation. What was that experience like for you? Um, it was definitely a, it was, it was a fun experience overall. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely a unique experience. I don't think that, um, you know, you have those type of high school experiences yeah. Um, often. And you know, those type of teams don't come around uh, maybe once in a generation. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it was definitely a special team. And um, just, just being a part of that team was something that, that's really special to me. Those guys are my brothers mm-hmm. uh, still to this day. And um, just being able to to have that, that championship mentality and just, you know, the mindset we had every game was, you know, we're, we're coming in and it's really how much are we going to win by. We're not Mm -hmm, uh, looking at our opponent. We're not worried about what they're doing. It's like, if we take care of business, we'll win by 20, Mm -hmm. 30, 40 points. And, um, you know, that might be an arrogant mindset to have, but, you know, I really appreciated it um, because on a lot of teams, um, you worry about, you know, what's the other team doing or or, uh, what do they have prepared for us? But, you know, just playing a part of it, being a part of that team, it was like, we're coming in, we know we're going to win the game, and that confidence definitely helped us uh, mm-hmm. pull out some tough ones. I mean, you guys, you say it was a little bit arrogant, but you guys backed it up. I mean, 35-0, and 0, not bad at all. And you guys, as you mentioned, were winning many of these games by 20, 30, 40 points, just kind of dominating everyone. And the highlights were everywhere. I mean, you go on Bleacher Report, ESPN, you guys were literally on every major news outlet covering sports. And I mean, I know that must have been a great experience, but you just carried it over to Damien. You broke the single season scoring record, uh, both your junior and senior year, broke it your junior year, came out, broke it again senior year. 
That senior season, you averaged 26 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists, named the most outstanding player in the San Gabriel Valley area. So for a high school career like that, and, and more specifically, your senior season, I mean, you go from Chino Hills to Damien, you were great everywhere you were. I mean, how does that feel to go into college? I mean, how'd that kind of get you ready for the next level? Um, I think that both of my experiences um, got me ready in, in different ways. Mm-hmm. I think that Sheila Hill has got me ready to play like high caliber basketball because, mm-hmm. I mean, if you look at some of the, the guys who played, I mean, a lot of those guys are pros now. Yeah. And the guys you work out and you practice against every single day, like we have guys that are top five draft picks, mm-hmm. Melo, O, Zo, um, you know, Jones and Majili, Eli Scott's so are really good at LMU. Mm-hmm. Um, Dre's over at Pepperdine. So playing against that level of talent every day definitely like just helped me get ready for playing against grown men in college. Mm-hmm. And then you get to Damien and I definitely had to work on my leadership skills. So mm-hmm. my junior senior year, I was, I was a leader um, and a captain on that team and just being able to lead guys to um, trying to reach heights that maybe we didn't um, feel like we could reach at the beginning of the season or um, trying to overachieve or do more than what we thought we could do. Mm-hmm. It's something that, you know, I definitely was able to take to um, Northern Arizona, and that helped me with my role this year in being a captain. Mm-hmm. For sure. I mean, I think it also helped, too. I mean, at, at Chino, more, more um, you know, prevalent. It was more prevalent that you guys were kind of in the spotlight there. And I know not every – I'd say very few high school players – are put in that position where they're in the spotlight. And that's something that happens much more often in college. So I think that definitely helped you out as well, just to kind of get exposed to people covering you, you know, media outlets giving you recognition, you know, seeing highlights on ESPN, CBS Sports, stuff like that. And I mean, you end up going to Northern Arizona University here. Why'd you kind of choose NAU? I mean, you're from California, Arizona, relatively close, bit of a drive. I know, you know, a few hours away. So did, did you kind of have plans to stay in California? Did you always want to go out of state? I mean, what kind of had you set on NAU? Um, as far as location goes, um, I've always wanted to, to go to a school that wasn't too far mm-hmm. to where I could get home if I needed to, but yeah. also not too close to where people can't just drive up. Yeah. Unannounced. I don't blame you. That's, um, that's so. the best way to do it. That's the best way to do it right there. <laughs> exactly so the five hour drive is is perfect uh-huh. um and, and outside of that um just coach murphy who was here when i first got here was just um he was just incredibly persistent and that's something i, I appreciated and and he did a mm-hmm. good job of selling his vision of what he wanted northern, northern arizona to become because at the time the team had won five like the, the year i signed the team had won five games mm-hmm. and so um, what he really did, he did a great job of just telling that this program is on the rise. I mean, we're not the best right now, but um, the guys that he recruited, he felt like had a chance to do some special things. And um, I feel like this year was a great first step mm-hmm. um, to turn this, this program around. I mean, your freshman year, you get involved right away. I mean, 30 games, 25 starts in your first season in the program. Not every freshman is going to get that chance. I know, obviously, as a high, uh, as a player coming out of high school, that was very successful, had a lot of coverage and whatnot. You know, you usually have a better chance of getting more play time. But did you expect that many opportunities right out of the gate? I mean, you averaged twenty eight minutes per game that first year. Uh, did that come kind of as a shock to you, or did you kind of expect being on the floor quite a bit? Um, it didn't, it didn't come as a shock. Um, mm-hmm. I was coming in with the mentality that you know I was gonna come and compete for a spot. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna come in, and I'm gonna do everything, every single thing I possibly can to yeah. to stay on the floor as long as I can. Mm-hmm. And you know, I just believed in the work that I put in. Um, you know, off season, during season, um, 5 a.m. Uh, yeah. midnight, like just whenever I could get in the gym, I was in the gym, and um, I think that that paid off uh, during my freshman year. So I really wasn't surprised at all. So I know you know you look so comfortable that first season. Eight points per game, 4.1 rebounds, 2.5 assists. You average just over a steal. I want to go back to your first college start, though. I have, I've interviewed a few guys who have played college football. I've asked them this. I don't think I've really asked any college basketball players this yet, but going back to your first college start, I mean, were you nervous at all for that? Because, listen, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Playing 2K, 
when my player gets in, when he gets his first start, man, I'm I'm pretty nervous. I'm like, I'm I'm kind of nervous. How are we gonna do in this game? You're going into D1 college basketball, your first start. What was that kind of like? What were the emotions that you were feeling before that first start? Um, I was just excited. I was uh-huh. really excited. You know, I put in, um, you know, so much work, and as a team, we put in so much work, and um, you know, it was just about coming out and um, just proving that that we'd all gotten a lot better. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't, I'm not a guy that that just gets nervous um, in general, but especially not about basketball. I mean, this is something I do every single day. Mm-hmm. Um, something I, I love to do, and it's it's not something that that um, <laughs> that makes me nervous. I wouldn't say nervous, but I was definitely excited and mm-hmm. and, and ready to play. Um, I slept great the night before, and wow. um, you know, you know, we we had a great game and, and we won, mm-hmm. and and I played pretty well. So good experience, good first I'm- experience. I mean, yeah, that's a great mentality to have. I think that's kind of tough to find, too, especially when you're making the transition from high school to college. And as I said, I mean, you've always looked pretty comfortable out there on the court. And the fact that you just kind of get excited before games, don't really get nervous, I think that's kind of rare to see in college sports. You made a huge jump this past season. I mean, really just improved on every facet of the game. You're averaging nearly 15 points per game, six rebounds, four assists. You shot the ball better from the field and from behind the arc when a guy makes a jump like this i i always have to ask this i mean this was your first off season where you were really immersed in college basketball so i mean what kind of went into that off season to make that significant of a jump um last off season um i definitely spent a lot more time in the weight room Mm -hmm. just because i feel like my freshman year i was on the floor way too much and that's just a result of me you know getting to the basket um, and not being strong enough to control my body or finish over bigger guys. So mm-hmm. uh, I spent a lot of time in the weight room. Uh, I spent a lot of time with my trainer at home, Keith Howard. Um, he put together some great workouts for, for myself and a couple of the guys I train with. And he also put together some, some great runs um, with some mm-hmm. really talented guys from um, the area that I'm from. So just playing against those guys every day, um, getting in the weight room. And then I would say the last thing is mentally I tried to take my game to the next level. Mm-hmm. And just develop some some different mental skills and strengths that uh, I probably didn't have my freshman year. So I think a combination of all three of those things led to um, the, the the jump that I was able to make between my freshman and sophomore season. And I mean, how's training been going this year with everything kind of going on? I know you you know we're right in the middle of a pandemic and stuff, kind of reaching this new normal. Has has training been pretty good for you? Have you been able to kind of keep a consistent schedule kind of keep things as normal as possible it's, it's actually been going really well oh wow that's great that's great i'm, I'm blessed to have um a gym at my disposal mm-hmm. and also a, a full weight room oh wow <laughs> disposal too, which is something that, that's difficult to, to find these days but yeah um you know training's been going been going really well i'm able to to get accomplished everything that i need to so that's good that's perfect gym in a full weight room i mean you might be in better shape right now than uh than you are like when there's no pandemic going on. So, I mean, that sounds pretty good right there. Um, and I know now that you've been at NAU for two years, I mean, just in general, how's the college experience been? I mean, how's the NAU community been? How's life been treating you out in Flagstaff? I know obviously you mentioned, you know, you're about five hours away from home. I bet it's a little bit of a difference from California. Still that same region of the country and whatnot. So you kind of still have some of those same elements of home. But, I mean, just how's college life been treating you in general? You know, how's it been your first two years? Um, Flagstaff is fun. I mm-hmm. love Flagstaff. It, it's it's not much to do um, mm-hmm. in terms of like uh, well, I, like a big city scene. But, yeah, yeah. Um, it's re- really quiet, really laid back, uh, really really tight and close knit, and um, you know I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the community is really behind um, our team and um, you know where we're taking this program, and that's something that that I appreciate because I don't know if you can find that everywhere. Where the yeah, community sure. is just so invested in, in what's going on. And, um, you know, my classes are great. The people that I've met up here, you know, have, have been great. And um, obviously, I love my teammates. So, you know, I'm, ha- I'm having a great time. That's great to hear. And, you know, it's always nice to kind of have those communities that center around the college. I mean, that's what Flag... I've never been out to Flagstaff. But, I mean, that's kind of what Flagstaff sounds like. The whole community is kind of, you know, built around northern arizona which is which is definitely i'm sure a great experience to have as a player you know and i I feel like it's just a great experience to have kind of just as a student in general and i mean you mentioned this kind of community aspect you're you're 
fans are behind you guys 100 percent you guys went 16 and 14 last season you had a really good season um and i mean i know you mentioned earlier this kind of rebuild you guys are kind of a coming of age program i guess a program on the come up on the rise um, can you talk a little bit about the team chemistry that you guys have and kind of what you're looking forward to in your junior season here? I know you mentioned you really kind of built on your leadership skills. So what's this junior season going to bring for you and the team? And I mean, how's your team chemistry as a whole? Um, well, our team chemistry is, is, is actually really great. Mm-hmm. Um, I just got back up to, to Flagstaff not too long ago and um, just being able to, to bond with our, some of our new guys so quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's been a pretty special experience because I think that's very rare where, um, you know, you're able to meet people, I mean, new guys for the first time and be able to, to hit it off so quickly. So, yeah. um, you know, that, that's really exciting. And I'm looking forward to seeing where those relationships go. And, um, as far as my leadership goes, it's going to be a different experience because, mm-hmm. um, I'm one of the oldest guys on the team now as a junior. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a lot of young guys on the team. Um, a lot of freshmen and sophomore players, but, um, you know, just because they're freshmen and sophomore doesn't mean they're not talented. I mean, mm-hmm. they're really talented guys and guys that I know are going to gonna help us out. And, um, you know, um, when our fre- we have a couple freshman point guards coming in. So just being able to, to help them and, um, you know, see where see where they go and um, see how they can, they can help our team is something that I'm really looking forward to. Oh, for sure. I mean, those young guys – you know, as you guys mentioned, you guys kind of on the come up, so those young guys are important. You're clearly going to be a leader on this team, and I mean, this this kind of goes away from the basketball here, but I mean, is college just flying by for you? I mean, you are halfway done college now. I mean, is is that kind of crazy to you? Do you kind of feel like you just got into college like like last week? Yeah, it it, it is honestly crazy. I was talking yeah. about that the other day, actually. Uh, you know, I remember my first day on campus like it was yesterday, and mm-hmm. um, here I am going into my my junior season. I only have two more years left, and um, the first two years were were great, and they flew by. And I'm hoping the the last two are, are even better. Yeah, I mean, it flies by like that, and I mean, especially when you, you know, when you're playing basketball too. I feel like it's just like one of those things where the seasons feel like like a month, even though they're you know three four months, but just flying by and I know I like to end on two questions here Cam I mean the first one you got to have some fun with it it's a fun question I, I always try and end on a question that's you know pretty fun guys can, you know guys have went all directions with this first one here second one gonna make you think a little bit might be tough you might have the answer down we'll figure it out but the first question here if you could sit down and have lunch with any NBA player past or present they can be dead or alive I mean who would it be and why Um, that's a tough question. It is a um, tough question. It is a tough question. I don't want to sit down with, um, but I think I would have to say Kobe, mm-hmm. um, just because of, you know, he was so good at teaching the game. Mm-hmm. Um, you look at some of the stuff he did, you know, after his playing career was done, um, the, what he made the muse on the back half of uh, his career, um, the, the Kobe detail series he, he got into. Um, you know, he does a lot of interviews and stuff that I'll still watch. And just the way he's able to teach the game, he's able to break down the game mm-hmm. um, physically and mentally is something that I, I'd want to learn from. And I, I'd wish I had the chance to pick his brain. No doubt. I mean, he, I, I would say there's been a ton of great basketball players out there, obviously. I mean, there's so many to choose from. But I think when it comes down to knowing the game and the mentality, Kobe is number one by far. I think. I mean, Jordan a close second. LeBron's up there as well. But Kobe's game. I mean, it's just like he knew everything to a T. I mean, he really studied the game. He really. It, it's like I feel like Kobe Bryant could have written a textbook on basketball. Like that's really how I feel. And um, I'm sure it would have been, you know, obviously just absolutely tragic um, what happened in January. And I know it just, it shook the world. I remember um, I, I was talking, you know, with a few guys that we had interviewed on the site earlier um, back in May about about Colby. And I don't know, I mean, I'll talk about this with you a little bit. I mean, that that when you first heard the news about Colby, I mean, what was your kind of experience with that? Because I remember I was, um, I was in the dorm with my roommate and he had told me, and I thought he was lying. First, I thought it was a joke. And um, then, I mean, 
you find out it's real. I remember walking outside and just, I go to school in Milwaukee and the city just seemed different. It just seemed completely quiet. Like, like everyone kind of knew. I mean, what was that experience like for you? Do you, do you remember where you were when you found out and stuff? Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was January 26th. It was mm-hmm. Sunday. Yep. Um, I just woke up and my dad called me mm-hmm. and he said, did you, did you hear about it yet? And, you know, I, I didn't know what he was talking about. And he just said, call me back with you. You do. So I'm like, what is this guy talking about? Mm-hmm. Um, so I checked social media and, you know, it was, it was really fresh at the time. So it wasn't much yeah. yep. um, on it besides, I think, the, um, I, I forget the, the site that posts all the TMZ. All the yeah. Comedy. It was the, yeah, the, TMZ. the TMZ tweet. Yep. So I look at TMZ and I think it's a joke. Yeah. And so, so when I, when I first read it, like, it's fine. And I think everyone's joking and it has to be a mistake. They have the wrong guy. Mm-hmm. And a couple of hours go by and I'm finding out that, you know, this is like, this is real. And it, it, it broke my heart. Uh, yeah. It's probably one of the saddest days of uh, my life. Kobe was somebody that I really looked up to and um, always been a, been a huge Laker fan. Um, always been a big Kobe guy. Um, and, you know, it was just really devastating. That was a really tough day for me. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we got through it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we got through it. Exactly. I mean, I'd say that's that was really the first time in my life where it was someone I didn't even know personally, you know. But it was just like I felt like a family member died. That That's really the best way I can explain it to people. It was just... Yeah complete sadness and it was and it it stuck with me for like a good a good week a good two weeks just like disbelief and sometimes now i'll even think about it still kind of in disbelief but um i think it's great it doesn't it really doesn't and i mean i think the one thing that is great is college basketball players such as yourself kind of learn so much from kobe and now you're kind of implementing that in your game along with thousands of other basketball players um like that next generation so, I mean, Kobe's game is still going to live on in various ways, that's for sure, and just his legacy in general. So that's definitely one thing that I try and think about, to try and stay positive, you know, um, but still terrible. Um, but, I mean, I mean that, that's obviously a tough thing to talk about right there because, as you said, still in disbelief. But, I mean, looking at, at your career here, I mean, five years down the road, I mean – what would be your ideal situation? I don't know if you've thought about this before, but I know a lot of guys might say, I definitely want to go in the NBA. A lot of guys might say I want to be coaching somewhere. Some might just want another job. But if you could kind of have the ideal situation for yourself five years down the road, what is Cam Shelton doing in 2025? Um, he's playing at the, the highest level that he can. Uh-huh. Um, and he's, he's having a, a great time. Um, with, with the with the game of basketball, he's obviously a lot better than he is now. <laughs> um, and, uh, he, he's continuing continuing his game. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, obviously, I, I want to keep playing this game. I love this game, and um, right now, it's just about you know getting better, so I have the opportunity to, to make money playing it one day. I mean, that's the best answer you can give, right there. I mean, you've started off with a solid two years at NAU, and you had a hot, solid high school career. I mean, you're just starting to get into that second half of your college career here. So just continuing to kind of build off those first two seasons. And, I mean, really the sky's the limit. Got the world at your fingertips right now. So, I mean, best of luck in your junior year. Congrats on a great sophomore season. You know, I hope your junior season starts on time and whatnot. And hopefully your your guys' schedule is as normal as possible. Um, but Cam Shelton, thank you so much for joining us here on the site today. It was great to have you on. really enjoyed talking to you. Yeah, thanks for having me, Nick. No problem at all. Uh, we'll put your Twitter down below so people can follow your career over at NAU and beyond. And we'll also put a link to NAU's uh, basketball page so you guys can follow for news and updates throughout the season. So make sure you keep updated on that. But guys, thank you so much for joining us here on Edge Sports Network for another interview in the summer series. Hope you guys are staying safe, staying healthy, and as always, we'll see you guys next time.